Done. How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to go over how to repair sticky or crunchy dirty keys on your MacBook Air. Specifically, we're gonna be working on this MacBook Air. It is a 2014 MacBook Air. And these instructions will help you with other model MacBook Airs as well as MacBook Pros, depending on the keyboard design and the style. Apple has made different keyboard tweaks and variations throughout the years. If yours doesn't look exactly like this, you might be able to take away some of the tips from this video and add it to the technique or process for that specific keyboard. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't a subscriber to this channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss another video. We're gonna go over everything that we use in this repair, and then I'm gonna give you some of, um, and then I'm gonna give you some of my best tips and takeaways before you even get started on the computer. The first thing you're going to need is your key pry tool. I have a set of Husky electronics screwdrivers that I got from a Home Depot. Although it's a set, I'm only going to use the smallest flathead screwdriver. You do need something with a little bit of length. So if you have a small electronics flathead screwdriver, that would be great. Or something similar in length, strength, and prying ability. Maybe a butter knife, maybe a butter knife, some tweezers, something along those lines. As long as you've got the technique right, the tool, won't really matter as long as it has some of these similar attributes. The next thing you're gonna need is some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%, I got it from Walmart. True computer repair people are probably going to destroy me because they use 99% alcohol, but I don't have that available to me, so I'm using 91%. And this is for cleaning the actual computer side of the keyboard. Um, you are gonna need an old toothbrush to scrub the keyboard with the isopropyl in order to loosen up the gunk and clean out the dirt. Last but not least, I used a plate to fill with water and place the keys on in order to clean them. If you're doing a lot of keys, this is really helpful. If you're not, you probably don't need it. And then a hand towel to lay the keys out and dry them. Those are the five tools that I've used. Now I'd like to give you some tips on the repair before you even get started. And the first tip is to watch the video all the way through. That way you know what you're getting yourself into. And I probably say some things later on in the video that might have helped with early on in the video. It's like my thoughts coming out while I'm working on the computer. So do make sure you watch the video all the way through before even trying to crack into yours. Tip number two is to always know your skill level and to do this at your own risk. If something looks way beyond what you think you're capable of after watching the video through, maybe reach out to a friend or family member that is DIY or a little bit more handy and maybe they can assist you with the repair. Number three, if you damage a key or a switch, which is very possible because they are pretty fragile with the little nubs and the hinges and the clips, you can always buy a replacement off of eBay. You wanna make sure that it matches your year, model, and key but they're fairly affordable at a couple bucks. They'll ship it to you, you'll get a new switch, you'll get a new keycap. It's really not that bad of a problem to have. It takes a couple days, but it will get your computer up and running, and hopefully you'll have learned from your mistake. With those tools and tips being said, hopefully this video will help to repair your MacBook Air keyboard or help you fix one to sell one, make a little bit of money. With all that being said, let's get into the repair, go into the shop, and start working on the computer. Keys are getting stuck. Keys are crunchy, and it's just no good to use in this condition, and it's no good to sell in this condition. As you can see, this one has some, looks like coffee or maybe a Coke or soda inside of it. There are two hooks on the bottom that clip directly with a downward force onto the switch, and then the two hooks on the top slide into the top part of the switch, a little bit different. For that reason, we don't pull from the top. We always pull from the bottom. The scissor switch itself is two different pieces of plastics in this interlocking way that when you pull up or press down, there's a pivot point in the middle and pivot points on the side allows the key to be raised and lowered and then presses on that the membrane switch right there which actuates the key. The goal in this repair is to pull the keys off without disrupting the switch. You have to pull them off a certain way, otherwise this, you'll start pulling parts 
off of the switch and the keyboard um, that you'll have to put back together, which is an added step, or you might damage the very fragile little, little nubs of plastic on the keyboard. Uh, before we start the repair, we wanna isolate what part of the keyboard is damaged. You would know this by where you spilt your sugary coffee or soda, and you can tell just by pressing on the keyboard, the space bar is a little sticky. So we'll probably do play button, J, M, N, space bar. So about from here over the liquid was spilt here. This wasn't my computer, so I'm just figuring this all out based off of what I have in front of me. So we'll be popping off all of these keys. Whenever you pop off a key, you're gonna attack it from the bottom. You're going to use a flathead screwdriver or a small thin piece of plastic or a small thin piece of metal. You're going to pry the key from the bottom. So you're gonna put pressure on the top with your finger and you're gonna lift from the bottom. And then where you see the switch is where you wanna kinda of press down and then work your way to the other side of the key. There are two clips, the bottom ones can be removed by popping. You'll wanna slide the key backwards and then lift a little bit to get these front clips off. This is the bottom of the key right here. This is the top of the key. When you're coming from the back, that's what you're gonna be pushing down on, trying to get this clip to come off of these two clips right there and pushing down on the front. You don't wanna just pop the key off because that'll put forces on these hinges right here and they're very, they can be pretty fragile and once you break one of these little plastic nub hinges in here, the whole scissor mechanism needs to be replaced. And that's more of a pain because you have to pull it out and then see which way it orients itself and then get a new one, put it in. It's a lot easier if you're gonna try to do it by just popping the key itself off, cleaning the scissor mechanism, cleaning the key, and then putting it back together. So lift from the bottom. That one popped off nicely. The fastest way to do this is to pull off all of the keys at the same time, place them aside, and then when you reassemble, you're gonna look at a picture of the MacBook or if you forget where they go. Or if you have another MacBook at your house, you can look at that or you can look at a picture online when you reassemble. And the reason I recommend doing that is because the repetition over and over again, you'll be better at popping them off and then you can clean them all at the same time and then we can reassemble them all at the same time, kind of like batch work and the batch work will always be faster, a faster yielding result. You will run into these larger keys where it's actually two switches and they're a little bit more difficult to get off with some gentle persuasion. They should still be able to lift off. You can see here, this one's got two switches, this metal bar, it's like a support for the key. And I got the, the right switch off good, but the left switch I have to reattached the inner hinge so I'm just pushing a little bit to each side and then pressing down and then getting that switch reattached. Uh, the larger keys are definitely a bigger pain. The space key is probably the most complicated. Three different support bars, and two different switches. You just gotta be very gentle. Support bars pop off the key or they can come out if you kind of pull them, push them a certain way and pull them out of their little hooks that are in there. Because it's on here, I'm still gonna continue to pry up some of these. And although you guys can't see this, I'm putting my head almost at keyboard level so I can see when I lift up the key. Helps me get it out. Okay, I think we're good there. Now we're gonna take the isopropyl 91, should be 99, real computer repair people are probably gonna destroy me in the comments, put some on the toothbrush, and we're going to start to clean. Clean out that nasty junk, all that sticky. You wanna be careful not to rip off a membrane. Be mindful of that. And you will have to intermittently reapply uh, isopropyl on your toothbrush and work it in there. 
Or better yet, if you have a Sonicare and an old toothbrush head that you no longer use, you can add some isopropyl to that head and let the toothbrush do the work. Rather than isopropyl, I'm going to just soak these in a plateful of water and I can see it looks like coffee. The coffee is dissolving. You really want to get it all off of the hinge clips because those are rotating. You want to be rotating smoothly and that could be part of the issue of why they are sticky and crunchy. Look at them. They're just melting off some of that coffee or soda or pop. Whatever it is, it's coming off. You can expedite this with a toothbrush as well. You just, you can't use water on the actual keyboard. Otherwise, you're gonna damage your keyboard, so that's why you use your isopropyl. But you got no issue using water, which is a great dissolver of coffee, on your keys. There's no problem with that, and it is just eating them. I did let the keys soak off camera my uh, battery died and then I took them out. You can see the key water is turned brownish, yellow. We're gonna remove that. And I've already spread the keys out on this towel to help them dry before reinstallation. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that they're dry because you don't wanna get any water in the keyboard. So you might wanna put these near a fan or somewhere where there's moving air in order for them to dry faster. You wouldn't want to hit it with any heat because you might shrink or melt the keys. Now we're going to get into the reinstallation. You're going to want to flip your keys right side up so you can see exactly what keys they are. I'll go through the installation of different types of keys, the support keys and the regular keys, how you're going to reinstall them. And the reinstallation is a lot easier than the removal. I'm going to take the support out and I'm going to put it on the shift key. It clips into the bottom. Okay, the shift key is back in. Uh, the delete key is also a support key. I think that goes up here. It's attached. This one I have attached to the key. I'm going to pull that out and then kind of wiggle it in to the to the bottom hooks and then sit that key in and then push it down and that key is now back on feeling good. The space bar key is probably one of the hardest ones to get in. I have both of the supports in already, the supports on the key. I'm going to line it up in the top first, press evenly. And if you didn't break any clips taking it off, it should go on and listen to how much better that sounds. If you pull up a picture, that'll help if you forget where the keys go or the orientation. For instance, this is the left command key, that is the right command key. These supports are easier to reinstall if you take them off. You just pry it out, then you're going to place the support in the keyboard and then top first and then press down and everything should take. Same with the other command key. It doesn't want to go in unless you take that support off. Top goes in, press down. You always want to double check your work by pressing on different parts of the key to make sure that it all presses down evenly, especially on the larger key. For a normal square key, you're just going to make sure that the mechanism, scissor mechanism is lying flat. Then you're going to slide the top in first and then press the bottom of the key down. And the power button one's going to turn it on. And keys like H and I, you want to make sure that you do install them correctly because you would maybe try to put it on the wrong way. The wide part on top and the narrower part on the bottom and then do the top first and then press down. Done. So much better. No sticking. 
it's like this thing has never had coffee spilt on it. It took a little over an hour because I was filming and my camera battery died, but I did get the keyboard repaired. Can't really tell by the sound difference on the camera, the crunchiness, but it was more of like a feel in the key and key some keys getting stuck that now no longer happen. The difficulty really isn't that bad if you're patient and take your time. It's a great foundation of understanding how keyboards switches work. And if you can do this, you probably can replace keys on broken MacBooks um, and take that skill to look at another computer. Keyboards, because a lot of them are designed the same way with, with the scissor or butterfly switches and expand your knowledge base and your confidence in repairs all across the board. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the repair, put them in the comments section. I will try my best to answer and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.